Today we're doing a Q&A video with my guy Wolf, one of our star players for Pacers Gaming. How's it going, Wolf? Pretty good, pretty good. You still? Doing well, man. You, you look a little bit more tan from the cruise. Did you have a good time? I had a great time, yeah. It was nice being in Miami for the winter, you know, for a week in December. And uh, I came back to 30 degree weather in New York, so that kind of sucks, but. It's tough. No, I had a good week though. We're, we're happy to have you back, film some more content for the people. And just so you guys know, this Q&A today, um, all of the questions you're gonna hear Wolf answer are from our channel members. So there's a difference between subscribers, thank you if you're a sub, and members, thank you if you're a member. If you wanna become a member, all you have to do is go down below and click join. Now, um, what do you get if you're a member? First, you get all our emotes. So you get the Pacers Gaming logo next to your name. You get all the Rate My Build emotes um, as well to spam up in the premieres and the chat. And then what I think is the most important is you get to have more one-on-one -on -one conversations and have your questions answered with Wolf, with me, with Nate, Swizz, Spencer, all of us are gonna be focused on our members more and more. So thank you to everybody who's joined the Pacers Gaming family so far. And we have a lot of awesome more member content coming soon. Quick plug there, Wolf, had to let the people know we've had a lot of questions about what's the difference between a member and a sub, and now you know. So, yeah. without further ado, Wolf, we have a few questions here. First is from one of our longest standing members, Daniel. He said, what's the most effective way you found to improve in 2K? And also, what's the toughest part about running your own pro-am team? So the first part of the question, uh, what's the most effective way to improve 2K? Um, it may sound cliche, but I think just playing the game as much as you can, um, learning the ins and outs of your role, if you're playing Pro-Am, you know, maybe gaining some chemistry with your team. Um, you know, the best way to improve is just play the game. You know, uh, 2K is about repetition and knowing what to do in certain situations. That's like the most important part of the game is like IQ. Mm -hmm. And the only way you get that is by, you know, constantly playing it and, and you know, going through different scenarios when you play the game. So. Um, I think, you know, it may sound cliche, but I think it's the best the best way is just to keep playing as much as you can. Um, toughest part about running the Pro-Am team, honestly, is all the scheduling that I have to do. Um, <laughs> you know, because I have, you know, I have four of the teammates with me who have all different schedules and I have to work with another team who has a different schedule and then lining those up, you know, making sure people are on time. You know, that's like the tedious part of running my Pro-Am team and, it gets kind of annoying after a while, but it's just something I've been dealing with for the past two years. So, and and now you're getting a feel for what I do in the 2K league, right? Yeah, Coaching yeah, a little I mean, bit. Yeah, it's definitely you know it's um it's really annoying, mm -hmm. just trying to like make sure everybody's on the same page. You know, you got to coordinate with different people and all that, but uh, you know, I guess it's just part of being the owner. You know, sure, definitely, and. I'll, I'll throw in this as well, Daniel, to add on to what Wolf said. <clears throat> He's exactly right. In, in 2K, once you have the basics down, what separates the good from the great and the great from the best is IQ. Knowing situations and knowing um, where to be on time and where to pass it, when to box out, when to leak, all those things. And w Wolf, tell me if I'm wrong, but this is the channel to, to watch if you're trying to take your game to the next level, right? Sure, 100%. Sure. Good deal. All right. Next, we have Wes BGB. That's tough to say. Um, <laughs> he said, Pacers Gaming have the most useful content from any team by far. Appreciate you, Wes. Just wondering, why do y'all not think volume shooter is good? Even only on bronze after my first five shots, mine starts bonus boosting. Oops up every shot thereafter. I think he meant to say pops. Tried it on other levels as well, and it only gets better. Let me know. Love your work. I'm proud of you. Okay, so for volume shooter, um, I wouldn't say necessarily a bad badge, but it depends on your play style and how you play. So if you're a point guard, uh, let's say you're running Pro-Am, right, and your, your team runs primarily pick and roll, and you're a point guard who takes 20 to 25 shots, go ahead and put volume shooter. It's going to work for you. But if you're, let's say you're a, on that same team, and you're playing the corner on offense and you take maybe two to three, five shots at most the whole game, it's not worth the badge. Mm -hmm. So um, I think the volume shooter depends on what position you play, how your team plays, and how many shot attempts you think you'll get up during the game. So um, as for Park, too, if you play Park and you're the guard and twos, 
long shooter is probably a great badge. You're probably going to take seven to eight shots a minimum a game. So um, I think, it, yeah, like I said, it all depends on the, the position and how you're going to play um, if you should have a long shooter on. Yeah, and it comes back to what we always talk about. There are certain badges in the game that are just great and that you should have at all times, no matter what. When we don't put volume shooter with those, it doesn't mean it's necessarily bad. It's more situational, exactly like Wolf just said. Mm -hmm. Okay, Chris Smith, shout out to you, my man. He said, appreciate all the content. He's been seeing great improvement in his play lately. My question is, how do you stay motivated to play besides just loving the game? Typically, there are a lot of toxic people in this community, and he finds himself moving away from it for months at a time. What do you think, Wolf? That's a tough question. Um, I would agree with the toxic part. You know, do I think we have to get better as a community as a whole? You know, um, you know, be more uplifting. I do agree with that. How to stay motivated besides loving the game? I mean, maybe it could be financially. You know, if you want to, you know, or, or have a dream of being a pro player. You know, maybe that could be motivating. Um, the way I stay motivated is I just love basketball. I love sports. Mm -hmm. And it's just really like the love of the game motivates me to play more. You know, I enjoy 2K. I've been enjoying it my whole life. Um, and that's what gets me to play the game every day. So, um, yeah, yeah I, th I think I think that's a tough question because it depends on, you know, how you want to motivate yourself. But, uh, yeah, me personally, just the love of the game is, is how I stay focused. And, and also the financial benefit, too. You know, I, I do this professionally. You know, if you strive to do that professionally as well, Chris, um, that could be another another motivation that, that 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 you can seek out. Great answer there, love it. Uh, moving on to one love Bubba, he said. Um, I've had a theory that defense in recent two Ks has been way too easy with rims or locks in the uh, with rims or locks with badges like Intimidator, forcing RNG misses and rim protector locking players in block animation. It makes it too easy to hop on a defender and be dominant. So Wolf, do you agree? And if playing defense required more skill, do you think that it would improve the competitive pro-am scene? Um, okay, so for this, I, I'm gonna agree. I think I think defense, uh, well, I, well, I'm gonna say this. I think certain builds have made defense look really easy. So for example, um, if you look at 2K19, um, the post uh, post draft meta was six eleven pure rims, mm -hmm. who had eighty speed or ninety speed, something like that, and could just chase down block everything, and made it like super easy, right? This year is the same thing. You have people who have thirty bad centers that are six ten, with eighty five speed guarding the pick and roll with Hall of Fame trapper, and just trapping everything, and then just you know getting back on on, on the roll because mashing is not that good. So yeah, I kind of agree that you know. Defense has been kind of dumbed down with the with the with the OP builds, um, and if defense requires more skill, you think it'll be more competitive. Pro yeah, I agree, hundred percent. I think anything that takes more skill will make pro am way more competitive. You know, you don't want it to be easy mode, right? You want to be, mm -hmm. you know, everybody to separate themselves from the good and the bad. So anything that will, that will require more skill will benefit the game, whether it be offense or defense. Exactly, and I think that's where the league build comes into play. They take out some of those badges, limit some of those animations, so it's more um, competitive. And we really want the league build for, for what we play on in the 2K League to be available for everyone. So just so you guys know, yes, we are pushing 2K as much as we can, release that league build every year so that you guys can practice and play on what we do as well. So stay tuned there. Hopefully we can, we can make some progress there. Okay, uh, last question of this video. One Love Bubba also said, he believes that Intimidator should be removed from the game because of the element of randomness it adds to the game with its ability to make players miss wide open layups at the rim because they were in the area. Therefore, it releases the skill gap and shouldn't be kept in next year's game. So similar to the last question, Wolf, but any, any other thoughts on Intimidator? Um, yeah, I mean, it goes back to uh, builds being OP and some badges being OP. Um, I think I think there's a lot of other badges that need to be taken out the game, such as Pogo Stick. You know, um, if you get caught in a, in a move in the paint, a guy catches you off your feet with a pump fake, you shouldn't be able to recover, right? It's like real basketball. If you're off your feet, 
you know, most likely that guy's gonna be able to, to score on you, you know? Like, mm -hmm. if you get beat from a good move, you shouldn't be able to recover. So like, yeah, I think a lot of other badges need to be worked, reworked, or taken out the game completely. But um, yeah, maybe I think Intimidator is definitely one of them, especially on a dirty badge center. If you have a Hall of Fame with a high interior defense and a high uh, perimeter defense, people will smoke open layups for sure. And, and I'm with you there, and I'm curious what our, our viewers have to say. Leave a comment down below right now what you think. Do you think Intimidator needs to be removed? Do you think Pogo Stick does or just reworked maybe? We'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, maybe we can even relay it to the league and, and help uh, 2K in next year's game. Who knows? We'll see what we can do. Um, but Wolf, thanks for hanging out. I think that's going to be it for this video today. Appreciate you standing by. No problem. And guys, just to reiterate what we talked about at the beginning of the video, we're going to be doing more Q and A's, more one-on-one, -on -one, giving you more access behind the scenes to our players and, and our staff, myself and Spencer. If you're interested in that, make sure you consider joining. Um, all you have to do is click the join button down below. We made it the cheapest you possibly can. It's like 99 cents for a whole month. And that gets you access to our emotes and lets you speak more uh, directly with us. As you guys know, we have tons of subscribers. We have a, a bunch of people submitting their builds, but if you want direct feedback, the members area, the members only area is about to be uh, more focused on so we can really find those people who want to improve their game and help everybody out as much as possible. So. For only a dollar, that's a steal. I'm telling you, we made it the cheapest we could. For a dollar? I wow. know, for a dollar, I'm telling you. I'm telling nice. you. Definitely, people should definitely sign up. <laughs> all right, man. Thanks again for hanging out. Appreciate all your questions from our members. Stay tuned for a lot more content coming soon from Cody and Wolf and Pacers Gaming. We'll see you guys in the next one.